Again, thank you for joining and good morning or good afternoon. Welcome to the LeverX webinar series, a free educational service offered to SAP customers to inform and demonstrate SAP functionality and industry best practices to improve your business performance. Our webinar today is entitled SAP Innovations for More Sustainable Product Design. In this webinar, jointly sponsored by SAP and LeverX, you will get an overview of SAP's latest innovations supporting more sustainable product design. SAP Environment, Health, and Safety, or EHS, Management 3.0 and 4.0, and SAP Product Stewardship Network. This will be followed by a demo highlighting some of the key capabilities of both of these solutions. My name is Ralph Davis, Marketing Manager at LeverX, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Before we begin our topic, let me briefly introduce you to LeverX. LeverX helps companies increase business value by leveraging existing investments in SAP solutions. Okay, thanks Ralph for the brief introduction. Um, of my topic today and also welcome uh, from, from my side here from Germany to all participants uh, today and uh, it's a pleasure for me to talk to you about uh, let's say our solutions that we have developed to support sustainable product design. Um, SAP is working in this domain since a couple of years. And what I would like to present to you today is the is the latest uh, solution, we call it a network solution, uh, to support companies uh, to come up with more sustainable products in terms of design, in terms of delivery, uh, and also to av avoid uh, co legal compliance topics. And this is all what we have in that solution. And we call it a network solution because for the first time we have designed an application uh, which consists of two parts. Uh, the one is EHSM which is basically uh, a back-end system integrated in your company core processes and uh, which is closely connected to what we call the product stewardship network which is a solution um, being part of the cloud uh, for easy accessibility. And I will show you in a few minutes how that looks like. Um, I think uh, this overview has already been presented to you, so I quickly go ahead to the overview of the solution. Um, before I go to the, to the details or overview, please let me give you a brief idea of the background um, of, of the environment um, our customers are operating in and why we have designed our solution. So typically environmental product compliance is driven by legislation. So this legislation, like the European REACH, um, is driven by the ambition to ban uh, to ban certain hazardous product uh, substances, uh, substances which are hazardous to man as well as to environment, from reaching consumer products. Um, and what we see is um, that it works in a way that uh, the EU Commission is sending out a list of substances which companies are obliged to report to wherever they are located in the supply chain. This list uh, consists of uh, substances of very high concern and is updated twice a year. Last year, for example, this list consists of 84 substances and in th uh, 2013 this list has nearly doubled. So that means all companies that produce or import components and products into in, in the European Union are obliged to report whether these substances are part of their products. And this across the entire supply chain from the chemical at the entrance of the supply chain with the origi original equipment manufacturer at the end who hands over his products to the consumers. Well, we also see that there are similar lists and regulations coming up in all places of the world and there's a lot of movement into this. The second challenge is, challenge is coming from industry itself, um, which defines certain industries 
for industry standards. These are also, let's say, uh, defined lists, for example, uh, like the ISDM standard of the automotive industry, which requires and obliges uh, all suppliers to automotive industry uh, to report on the substances of the components they deliver to uh, the automotive companies. Mm. Um, a further driver are, let's say, customer requirements. Customer, customers uh, often, let's say, impose um, certain black or white lists to their suppliers because they have a, a high interest also to be on the safe side in the future, so they do not rely only on a legislative list, but they develop their own list, and also these change in time and depending on the region. This is one side of the coin. On the other hand, we know that most of our customers are working in a global environment with suppliers and customers all around the world. There's rapid change uh, also in business relationships and of course there's also a change in product design which uh, can take place uh, for various reasons. Often products are more and more complex and all, as well as components. And so this is a situation where companies on the one hand side have to monitor and to comply with, let's say, uh, legal or industry or customer requirements um, and doing this in the ever-changing environment of their manufacturing uh, situation. Um, because of these situations, uh, customers are confronted with two major tasks. One is to manage the compliance status and uh, the compliance risks of their own product portfolio, which consists of, let's say, components they buy from suppliers as well as own manufactured components. On the other hand, there is a high uh, requirement for data exchange with supply chain partners uh, across regions uh, and across markets. 